Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Batman and the Joker, The Deadly Duo. Yes, an actual comic book review. Before I start, Jawbreakers Forever graphic novel, Iron Sights 3 and Impossible Stars 2 combo campaign. I know I said I was closing these, but they changed how you close them. You used to just say, close it now, and they would close it within a few hours. But now you request a date, and I guess they give you some, like, room afterwards to change your mind, so... It's still up. I'm guessing that since it's the end of the workday that it will be up until at least tomorrow. Still reading this, which is excellent. And uh, as always, here's me proving I actually bought it. And then here's how I actually read it. Because the uh, Kindle reader is ridiculous. So this is uh, a project that Mark Silvestri has had in the works for, I think, like a decade or so. And I believe he didn't even start it with any kind of a contract. He's just like, hey, I'm Mark Silvestri. They're going to want this. It sounds like most of this has been done for a while. That being said, it feels very modern. They just had the new Arkham Knights game come out. Which, by the way, I think the fix is in. In this case, against a media corporation. Because I see nothing but terrible reviews for this game. And I've seen it on a 4K projector, and it looks amazing. And every time I see an article, it looks like they purposefully dialed down the rendering settings to make it look as bad as possible, because I'm telling you, on a 4K projector from a PS5, it looks as good as any of the movies. It's amazing. So it's in continuity-ish, I guess. It's not out of continuity, at least not so far. If I remember correctly, way back in the day... Mark Silvestri had like a buddy. In the beginning days of Image, everyone would just write with their buddy from like college. It was like a Brandon Choi situation. And then later on, they're like, oh, maybe we should hire actual writers. So there was some guy he used to write with all the time. I don't remember reading much with him. But it seems like he's writing this by himself and it's pretty darn good. It's a very simple story. Back in the day, this would not have been a miniseries. It would have been an arc in Detective Comics. Or, more likely, Legends of the Dark Knight. So there's a killer out there that seems like the Joker, but he isn't the Joker. And so Batman and the Joker are teaming up to investigate, take him down, whatever. The art is fantastic. He's doing this, uh, I mean, he's always done this kind of scritchy, scratchy thing. But now he's inking himself for an entire book, and apparently an entire miniseries. And it just works. At the beginning... It almost feels like, is this going to be worth it? Is this too simple? Is this too tropey? Is I mean, at one point he's like, Harvey Bullock is a good cop. Gotham has teeth that can sometimes gnaw the good right out of a man. But not Bullock. Not yet. And you're like, okay, that's not bad. But it does sound a little cliche. So are we just going to get a bunch of cliches? It's like, oh, he left a Joker card. Nope, nope. It starts off with some cliches right away, but then it's also immediately giving you... So, they introduce the concept that Bruce has a little bit of a sense of humor. It's pretty dry, as you would expect. And it's also very, like, 1920s, like Buster Keaton. It's like, oh, the guy has a rug, I'm gonna make, <laughs> I'm gonna make him flip his wig, I will! So he swings down extra low on purpose... Just to uh, make the wig fly off of this cop that he doesn't like. You're like, okay, I mean, that's not hilarious. But later on, when you start establishing that it's going to be Batman teamed with the Joker. And the Joker is kind of like, oh, you actually got a little bit of a sense of humor. I never noticed that before. That's interesting. And there was a good setup with this uh, 1920s bit right here. <laughs> so we get to see the Joker, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is written as the original Harley Quinn. Not Deadpool as a lesbian, but a gangster's mole, M-O-L-L, who just adores him and thinks he's a white knight that's going to rescue her. This is the Harley, the original Harley, who had depth. We get to see a cool design for the uh, Batmobile. This is, I'll just call him the Joker monster, or spoiler, a Joker monster. Good fights, good action. This was very important to me. There was consistency of quality. There was a huge problem back in the day. And even still, remember when 
Rob Liefeld came back for Major X and then even Snake Eyes, where the first couple pages look like them, and then they start calling in assistance, and then they just, just check out mentally entirely. I think, like the last few miniseries produced by Neil Adams, this is threefold. It's meant to reestablish himself back in the industry as a major player. It's meant for the page rate he got, which is probably pretty good. The bonuses he should get, since this should sell quite quickly. But also, every one of these pages, which he drew and inked on actual Bristol board, these are all multi-thousand dollar pages. He's going to clean up, he's going to make hundreds of thousands just on original art from this miniseries. He did Batman and the Darkness 20 plus years ago. That was legit. Or at least I remember it being legit. I'm going to reread it and probably do a community post review on it. But this thing is just a win on every single level. Like I said, when I started to worry it was going to be tropey and generic, all of a sudden it would introduce new elements to it. You really got to zoom in to appreciate how good the art is. I mean, this version of the Batcave might be the best one I've ever seen. I wasn't sure if he was doing pencils and then they were adjusting the levels, but then later on it says inked pages and it seems to be the same style as all of the other pages. So I think he actually did ink this. He just did it in a way with mostly very thin lines. I've been re-watching The Flash from 1990, and one of the things I always laugh about is there's a trope in superhero comics that's gone on for 80 plus years where superheroes will confront hardened criminals and they'll be like do this and tell me this or i will punch you <laughs> it's like what criminal hasn't been punched hundreds of times already so he does the hang joker off the edge of the building bit and the joker's like okay come on you're not gonna drop me you're not gonna kill me let's talk let's talk so they come to an agreement of sorts and that part was actually written uh, pretty well i know batman spitting in someone's face might seem borderline out of character but when you read the entire scene it totally works and then at the end spoiler we find out that it's not one joker monster but several there's even a lady joker monster back there so this thing was just excellent i expected it to be good and it was better than i expected i'm totally down for this entire mini series and i also get the feeling that it's subtly going to be not as pronounced as it was with Sean Gordon Murphy, but I think it's going to be a Sylvestri verse where they're going to allow him to make changes to the canon, which would make it out of continuity, but it would be within his own continuity. I can definitely see this becoming the first of several miniseries, just as Sean Gordon Murphy's Murphy verse is uh, winding down. Anyway, before I go, I requested these be closed so I can start compiling the backers list, and it's still open, so I'm not going to start compiling them yet. But they're still open. I guess they should be open until tomorrow or so. So, Jawbreakers Forever Graphic Novel, Ironsight 3 Impossible Stars 2 Combo Campaign. Thanks for watching. Bye.